different. Some countries drive on the right side of the road, and some drive on the left. How come? Well, first of all, these differences were in place long before cars were even invented. You don't need cars to need a rule of the road. But how do you decide what the rule should be? Well, would you believe that the reason we drive on different sides of the road can be traced back to one simple fact? For centuries, the majority of people in the world have been right-handed. But how can our hand preference explain why we lack a universal rule of the road? Well, you have to go back to a time before there were cars or even bicycles. A time when people traveled mostly by foot, and they trusted no one. Now imagine two strangers meeting on a path. Both are right-handed. As they pass each other, they move to the left. This keeps their sword hand between their body and their adversary, just in case they need to defend themselves. Now let's add a horse to the story. A right-handed knight carries his sword on his left side. If he tries to mount his horse from the right, his sword gets in the way. But if he mounts from the left, there's no problem. And once he's on top of the horse, it's the same as being on foot. If he encounters a stranger, he'll move to the left so he can protect himself with his right hand. So riding horses while wearing a sword and having to protect yourself with your right hand were two variables that favored staying on the left side of the road. But the situation is quite different if you're not riding the horse. Maybe it's being used to carry supplies or pull a cart. Whatever the reason, if you're walking the horse and you're right-handed, you'll want to control the horse with your right hand, which means you have to walk on the left side of the horse. Now suppose that two people walking horses were to meet on a path. If they pass on the left, the horses will meet face to face and could become aggressive. But if the walkers pass on the right, they keep themselves between the two horses and there's much less chance of a problem. Of course, once people started traveling longer distances, they got a little tired of walking all the time. So the question then became whether they should ride the horse or the cart. Now the roads at this point in history weren't that good, and the carts didn't have rubber tires to help cushion the bumps, which made riding on the cart pretty uncomfortable. So they decided to ride on the horse. But as the loads got bigger, so did the number of horses required to pull the cart. To control a team of horses, you need reins and a whip. And here's where the right hand comes in again. The whip requires more coordination to operate than the reins. And if you're right-handed, you're going to want to have the whip in your right hand. And if the whip is in your right hand, it's easier to control the other horse or horses if you sit on the left rear horse. Now suppose two horse-drawn carts were to meet on a road. With both drivers sitting on the left horse, they would naturally veer to the right. This makes it easier for them to check the clearance as they pass each other. The popularity of this mode of transportation in France and much of continental Europe led to the custom of passing to the right of oncoming traffic. However, in England, riding one of the horses that was pulling the cart never became very popular. They preferred to ride the cart itself. But rather than just carry supplies, the wealthy and powerful members of society preferred to carry themselves around. Now it was no longer a cart or a wagon, it was a carriage. And the drivers of these carriages had to sit up here on a separate box. On the carriage, the driver would once again want to hold the reins in his left hand and the whip in the right. But if he was sitting on the left side of the carriage and tried to use the whip, he could easily hit one of those wealthy, powerful people on the back not a good idea. So instead, he moved over to the right side where he could wield the whip freely without hitting anything. Ha! And because they 
sat on the right, if two carriages were to meet, the drivers would now move to the left to check the clearance. You can see that depending on the situation, being right-handed can favor driving on either side of the road. So ultimately, what determined the rule of the road in different countries was timing. Specifically, what mode of transportation was the most common in each country at the time when the laws were first drawn up? Knights on horseback and carriages driven from a box favored left side driving, while walking or riding horses attached to carriages favored right side driving. Once set, the different rules of the road were then exported through colonization. British and Portuguese colonies inherited the left side rule, while French, German, and Spanish colonies inherited the right side rule. Of course, over the years, many countries have changed their rule of the road, and the main reason has been safety. With the invention of the car, you can imagine it became a little dangerous for countries that shared a common road system to be driving on different sides. In Europe, the last country to make such a change was Sweden. Prior to 1967, the rule in Sweden was to drive on the left side of the road. But on September 3rd of that year, all traffic came to a halt. And at 4.50 a.m., the country switched over from driving on the left to driving on the right side of the road. In fact, the trend over the past hundred years has been for countries that drive on the left to switch over to the right. This map shows the countries that drove on the left in 1919. And here's how many drive on the left today. Notice that most of the countries that do still drive on the left are islands. Great Britain, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, they're all islands. The benefit of being an island is you don't share your roads with any other countries. So you don't have to worry about foreigners driving in on the wrong side and causing accidents. On an island, all you share is the sea. And luckily out there, there's just one universal rule. Pass on the port side, or in less nautical terms, stay to the right.